Thank you for listening to Depictions Media Radio. Welcome back to the show, everyone. Um, I have today um, with me John and Mark X. Cronin. I'm saying your last name correctly. It's Cronin? Cronin. 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 Oh, okay. Cronin. Yeah. <laughs> from County Cork, Ireland. That's where the name comes from. <laughs> County Cork, Ireland. You know, that, it, Ireland is it's generally a happy place. Um, but anyway, um, John and Mark, they're a father and son team, and they found that John's crazy socks. And John is a entrepreneur who just happens to have uh, Down syndrome. Uh, you may know, know them for being uh, the... EY Entrepreneur of the of the Year, for, uh, maybe for testifying um, in front of the U.S. Congress or at um, the United Nations. Um, John himself was sock buddies with uh, President George H.W. Bush, and they created um, uh, John's Crazy Socks as as a bootstrap. Um, business and it has grown into a multi-billion dollar social enterprise and social enterprise um, is recognized internationally with the mission to spread happiness and to show people what different um, abilities are are out there um, John and, and uh, Mark they continue that mission w within their own business and they actually have have more than half of their employees have uh, uh, different abilities and they also give back to the Special Olympics and they have raised um, almost half a million dollars for their charity partners and it, if you think that you haven't stumbled across them on uh, social media they have over 240,000 followers on Facebook and a just a mere fifty-five thousand on Instagram. So somewhere along the line, you've probably stumbled across their socks. So welcome to the show, guys. Well, that's quite the introduction. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. You've done a lot of your research. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, hey, it was it wasn't easy. It it was really easy to find you guys. Um, so. And is in you're doing good work for pe for people, um, just 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 as a, a show note that um, the precursor to the this specific show was created um, on a um, a charity based radio station that was centralized around people with diff uh, different abilities also. It was advocacy for people who um, just needed needed a radio show to to help help them get uh, get rights to be able to do different things, right? Sounds good. Yeah. So. So anyway, um, what's the whole story? How did how did you just decide on socks anyway? Well, uh, we'll put the story in some context. We just celebrated our fifth anniversary. So if you go back five years, mm -hmm. um, where were you, John? I, I was in a Huntington High School. I'm going, going to be in my last year of school. So we're on Long Island, outside of New York City. And John, as he said, was in his last year of school, yeah. trying to figure out what was he going to do next, like everybody else. And what were you looking at? I, I look at school, program, and work. I, I can't find, I, I don't like. So, so Michael, that's not an unusual occurrence. John had Down syndrome and he's looking for meaningful work, but there just aren't a lot, enough good opportunities 
for people with different abilities. You know, some people call it a disability. But John here, he's a natural entrepreneur. Yeah. If he didn't see a job he wanted, what do you say you would do? I do. Uh, I want to create one. I want to make one. He'd make his own job. And what did you tell me? I said I want to go into business with my dad and nice son and father together. Right. He said, you know, let's go into business, Dad. Now, I'm a fortunate man, Michael. I have three sons. John is the youngest. And this is one I could work with. So uh, it seemed promising. Um, and John, it was your idea to sell socks. Right? I did. Why socks? Why socks? It's fun. It's colorful. It's creative. I will always let me be me. I walk here and say my whole life. We used to drive around looking for these socks for John. Right. Um, so we figured this. If John loved crazy socks that much, surely other people would too, and we could find our tribe. So we decided to go test the idea. We went the lean startup route. Mm -hmm. We built a website on the Shopify platform. We got a little bit of inventory. And because we're bootstrapping, you know, you got to make do with what you have. The only marketing we did was to set up a Facebook page. And I would take out my cell phone and we made videos. And who do you think was in those videos? I am. It was John. <laughs> yes, right? I, I'm talking about socks. Socks, oh. socks, socks. Right. And we noticed something. Those videos started getting traction and people were sharing. Right. So what day did we open it will be on Friday, December 9th, 2016. And we were very fortunate. We got what felt like a flood of orders on the first day. We got 42 orders on the first day. And most of them were local, right? They were in our town of Huntington. So what did you decide to do with those orders? I, I want to do a home delivery. Home deliveries. So we got red boxes. We put the socks in the box and we looked at it and said it needs something else. Right. I, I put it in a thing and I wrote and candy. I, I, I heard, heard the kisses. Filled it with Hershey's kisses, loaded up the car, drove around, and John knocked on doors delivering the socks. We, we were out as late as 10 30 at night some nights with him knocking on doors. And how the customers respond? Customers loved it and they took a fire. Take a pictures and share on and social media. Or would I get a spread? So that's how we got started, Michael. It was out of necessity. It was John's idea. We tested it, and we saw this was something that could work. Okay, so on the, on the business end of that thing, I, I like a lot of what you're saying. Is you you actually rather than trying to recreate the wheel you actually found something that was was already out there and you uh, and and you sought out and found found a viable audience that's awesome stuff we did um you know one there are some folks that they want to go you can you know pursue a business and find a market that nobody is serving mm-hmm but frequently, that's a very small market. Or you could go into a crowded market where there's a lot of people and there are a lot of sock companies. Um, but then you have to offer something that's going to stand out. Yeah. And, and we did that by having a unique story and telling that story and having a unique purpose behind what we did, what we do now. So you, right. you used your uniqueness to 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 your advantage and and look at the results and the payoff, right? Right. You know, part of it is, uh, you know, we, we are who we are. John here has no guile. Right. And I'm too old to care. This is just <laughs> who we are, right? Um, but what we've done has gone on, and you mentioned it in your introduction, we've created a slightly different type of business model. It's a social enterprise. Mm -hmm. So we have both a social and a business mission, and they feed off of each other. They're indivisible. 
if all we were doing was selling socks, you would not be talking to us. But because there's something more than that, now it stands out and we can do something special. And we have a very simple mission. What's that, buddy? And spread happiness. Spreading happiness. Everything we do is designed to spread happiness. Now, I was I would say that that is your true uniqueness. Is that um, is that your social mission is to spread happiness? Yes, and and we believe it, right? Mm -hmm. It. It makes itself manifest in everything we do. And, and we built the business on five pillars. I, it's fit and hope, give it back, find price, I do care of love, make it personal. And we've added a fifth, making this a great place to work. Because think about it. If what we want to do is spread happiness, we have to start at home. Our colleagues have to be happy here. It has to be a great place for them to work. How could we spread happiness if they're not happy? Um, then it's you know, make it personal. Connect with our customers. We're always looking to create customer experiences. It's not simply, simply transactions. So, you know, to this day, every package gets a handwritten thank you note from John and a package of candy. Now, yes, we photocopied that package, but we've shipped now over 360,000 packages to 88 different countries. And every one of those has had a thank you note in candy. And, and here's the thing, if we get an order between our office and home, what are you doing? I, I, I do home delivery. He's still doing home deliveries. Anything we can do to connect to that customer. Right. right. And then the fun products you can love. And this is very cool. When we started, we had 37 different types of socks that we were offering. Today, we have over 4,000 different socks, which makes John here the owner of the world's largest sock store, which is pretty cool. That 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 is quite the achievement. I'm, I'm thinking 30, 37 diff, different socks. That's quite a lot. You said 4,000? 4, 4,000. And we've had smart people come and tell us, oh, you got too many SKUs, you got to reduce it. But it's the choice in part that makes us attractive to people. Because at its core, because we sell online, we have to be a great e-commerce business. We got to have a great website. Right. We got to have great choice. The products have to be great. We have over twenty nine thousand five star reviews, um, and the service has to be great. Mm -hmm. We do same day shipping. If an order comes in today, it's going out today. We do better shipping than Amazon. And Jeff Bezos, he's not putting the thank you note candy in those Amazon packages, but John is. And it, again, back to your you you your uniqueness, that that note and that candy, like you said, uh, Jeff Bezos say isn't is it isn't going to do that, but um, we are right, right. And then there's the giving back. We hmm. started by we start by pledging five percent of our earnings to the Special Olympics, and why the Special Olympics? I am better Olympic. Late. Yes, you are. Yes, I am. Um, but we've gone on to create a series of products that celebrate and raise awareness of causes and raise money for those causes. So what were the first awareness socks we created? The first one is a Down syndrome awareness socks. Down syndrome awareness socks. And who designed those? As a NASA Down syndrome. No, who designed those? I did. You did. And they raise money for the National Down Syndrome Society. But we've created autism awareness socks and cerebral palsy awareness socks. Yeah. Gold Together socks that fight pediatric cancer. And they raise money for those socks, raise money for the American Cancer Society. And we raise money for the Autism Society of America. Um, 
you know, we're, we're about to kick off our uh, fourth annual Autism Can Do Scholarship. Uh, so, you know, giving back is baked into everything we do. Yeah. But the most important pillar for our business is inspiration and hope. We want to show what's possible. We want to show that a young man in high school could create a business. Mostly, we want to show what people with different abilities can do. Yeah. So, John, you have Down syndrome. Yes, I am. John's the face of the business. Mm -hmm. More than half of our employees, we've been able to create 31 jobs. 22 of those are held by people with different abilities. And we want to show the world. So... Mm -hmm. We take our processes and turn that into content. We, we, we create content that we share through our various social media platforms. We host school tours that we do both virtually and in person. We do speaking engagements. Uh, we've, we've been to Vancouver for speaking in engagements. We've crisscrossed the U.S., Canada, Mexico. Now virtually we speak around the world. Uh, we do advocacy work. So we've testified twice before the U.S. Congress, and we've spoken at the United Nations, standing up for the rights of people with different abilities. Yeah. We're doing podcasts, and you know, we're grateful that you've invited us on your podcast. It's all to tell the story and share what's possible. So when you roll all of that together, you get John's crazy socks. That sounds quite the quite the organization. Um, it's you. You have put together more, more things. Going back to to Amazon, um, you know, we're talking about a, a, a guy that's that's they created Amazon. He he was uh, a stockbroker before that, and um, and he's supposed to know a lot about business. You've managed to to do that um, just coming out of high school. Now that to me gives. I don't. I don't care if you have Down syndrome or not. Coming out of high school, starting your own business, and then making millions at it—that is hope and inspiration to 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 every teenager that's coming coming out of school. You know. Yeah, and that's that's part of it. When we say sh we want to show what's possible, it cuts two ways. Mm -hmm. One, we want to show what the business is why it's good business to uh, employ people with different abilities. In fact, we just did our second TEDx talk, and that's entitled mm -hmm. Hiring People with Differing Abilities is Not Altruism, It's Good Business. And we make the business case for doing it. But when we talk to students and clients and social service agencies, we want them to know that we need them to get jobs. We need them to be employed and they can be employed. We want them to know what's possible. Yeah. Yeah, that, that, that's, that's an excellent point. Um, when when um, I first got, in, got into radio up here in Vancouver, my, uh, my partner, um, my show partner, he has autism and he's probably the, the one of the best radio operators I ever worked with. There you go. <laughs> um, it it was his um, attention attention to detail, right? You know? um, yeah, we could tell stories about folks here. I mean, I tell you a story about a a gentleman who works for IBM named Dylan Raphael, who's also on the autism spectrum. Mm -hmm. IBM hires him, sends him off to a client site to work on some quality testing. He looks at what they're doing because he's looking from a different point of view. He's able to see opportunities and as well as weaknesses in what they do. Completely overhauls the system, now has a bunch of patents and has been promoted several times because of the quality of the work he does. Yeah, That only happened because IBM said, oh, we can hire people with autism. It, uh, John, it, 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 I mean, your creativity and, and your and your idea of socks and, and, and the hope and joy that, that you give the world, that's the reason why you, you so, you're so successful. It has, it's not 
not just the the socks. It's it's the hope and joy that you that you're giving the world. You spreading happiness, pal. Yes, I am. You work at that. You like doing that. I do. And and you're right, Michael. At the end of the day, yes, we may in fact be the world's largest sock store, but we're not really a sock store. The socks become the physical manifestation for the story and the mission that we have. You know, we we're very fortunate. We have very loyal customers. We love to hear when customers tell us, I put on your socks and they just make me feel good. Yeah. yeah it's, it's, now, now that's, that's one heck of a, uh, of a testimonial. The socks make me feel good. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's what it's about. Yeah. Right? It's how you feel. Yeah. Um, there's, there's a line from Maya Angelou, when she says, people are not going to remember what you said or what you did. They're going to remember how you made them feel. Um, and, and we're looking, we're looking to build relationship with our customers, not just transactions, not just an exchange of money. Build a community that that's built on trust and sharing and doing for each other. John, how did how does it make you feel to to, to fill the, a purpose like like you have? How does this job make you? How does owning your own business and what you're doing make you feel? I make me feel really happy. I really, I really look for it. You like you like doing what you're doing. I do. You excited? Yeah, they are. Yeah, you like it. You work hard. Yeah, they are. I love it. Yeah. Mark, how does it feel to to, to 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 see your son succeed the way he has. Oh, I'm over the moon. Right. I, I tell you, I'm a fortunate man. I have three sons. Each of them has found their own path, their own traction. They've all gone at different paces. But to be able to work with John, to see the way he's always coming up the learning curve, to see the way he does for others the sense of gratitude he has, and then to share some of the experiences. It's so wonderful and fulfilling. I'm so fortunate. You know, it's, uh, you know, we visited Vancouver, your, your town, uh, as part of a speaking tour that the United States, uh, the State Department put together. And think about how amazing that is that that they thought we were worthwhile to go speak on entrepreneurism, and and I got to do that with my son, or to you know to sit before a committee in Congress and and testify with my son. What what a fabulous feeling! Um, but I, I'll, I'll give you a, a story with John. We we've, we've been very fortunate. We've had elected officials come through and different people come through and, and give plaques and proclamations and and one day the county executive, we're in the county of Suffolk, he came in here for a tour and he met with us and, and to his credit, he really did want to learn more about our business and learn what it is like to hire people with different abilities. But when he was done, he he said, John, I want to give you a proclamation. And it was from the county of Suffolk. And we're the new guy. And John said, well, wait a second. And he got all his colleagues around him. He said, now you can go. And the county executive read this statement. And he gave John this plaque. And John turned around and said, now I want to give it to the people that really make this happen. I want to give it to my colleagues because they're the ones doing the work. And I watched him do that. And I would, this is a young man who gets it. Yeah. He understands. And, and boy, that made me feel good. And I, I, I have, uh, I have my dad become, and I have, he, uh, give me a strength. I, I, I give me strength. I, ha I have, I'm king. My curve. And this, this, this man, I, I, I always please me. I, I, I always please me. 
I, I know I'd come with that. I, 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 I never was at my dad. I, I, I never was at my father. Yeah. We're, we make for a good team. Yeah. That's, that, that's uh, me, um, just simply amazing work that you guys are doing. And, um, Unfortunately, that this is this this whole recording is going to wind up being audio only, and I wish that um, that uh, our listeners can can see um, that picture right there uh, of 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 John snuggling in next to you like that, Mark. That that's just really cool stuff, you know. Yeah. We're- we're fortunate. Also, it's cold in the office. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you, you, yeah. Um, at at this present uh, time, you you said that that you're waiting for like a foot of snow to fall on on. on yeah, your- we woke up at twenty degrees out, and they they said we're going to get one to two feet of snow, and life's okay. You know, the seasons are good. <laughs> yeah. So. Uh, I, I I really really enjoyed this. Um, you you guys are amazing in what you're, what you're doing and and how you're making people feel. You, hey, you brighten brighten my day up today just talking to you. Well, thank you, Michael. we you know one of the things we want people to see. There's no none of the proverbial rocket science we're doing. Everything we're doing is pretty basic and common sense. Um, we particularly want other employers to know. We have no special training. Mm-hmm. We have no special programs. We hire people with different abilities because we're looking for good workers. So if you got to know us, you'd find out that John here, he's a very nice guy. I'm not. I don't give out jobs to people. They got everybody's got to earn work here. And, and we want people to see that. Yeah. Because yeah. at, at the end of the day, we're a couple of knuckleheads selling socks. Yet it, that all we want to do is and change, the world. change the world, right? <laughs> but, um, okay, let, let's talk about that change the world part. And um, you, you two are reminding me of of a line in um, in a song that it said, "If if you want to want to change the world, look in the mirror and be that change." Um, right. And. What, what if if it was the perfect world? What would it look like to you, too? Well, let me answer it this way: We get to do that here, and it's not perfect. We're all human. We have our flaws. Mm-hmm. But one of the one of the aspects about what we're doing, we have no excuses. We can't blame it on the board. We can't blame it on headquarters. We can't blame it on the government. We're responsible for what happens here. But we get to create the world in which we want to live. I'll give you a a concrete example. So a few months ago, a customer called up and wanted to place an order on the phone. Now understand, we don't take phone orders. We only sell online. Unless you call up and say, I want to give you a phone order. Then we take your phone order because we want to help out, right? Right. Well, this woman, in addition to placing an order on the phone, didn't want to use a credit card. She wanted to send a check. I said, okay, send a check. But what happened is the person who took the order didn't pull it right away. So by the time the check arrived, one of the socks that this woman wanted, we had sold out. And I heard this story and I said, well... Why didn't we just send her the check right away, the, the package right away? And the answer was, well, we had to wait for the check to arrive. We had to make sure she sent the check. Let me ask you something, Michael. Mm-hmm. If you're talking and you tell me that you're going to mail me a check, would you send that check? Yeah. Of course you would. Yeah. And that's what I said to my colleagues. Why don't we just trust people? We're not talking about somebody anonymous on the web. We're talking someone we had a conversation with. She said you would mail us a check. Why don't we just trust people? And they tell us that we assume they will. We'll send them their package right away. 
And my colleagues, you know, one of them said, can we do that? We can do anything. And isn't them, and then somebody said, well, what if it's more than $100? Who cares? And isn't that a world you would rather live in? Where you could trust people. Where we could take each other's word and live on that. And we choose to live in that world. Now understand, if you violate that trust, then we'll respond accordingly. John has two very large brothers. So if you violate that trust, we'll send them to your door. But it turns out, I went and looked, and in five years, nobody has ever bounced a check. So when you ask about a perfect world, I'm not sure what that perfect world looks like. Um, but I do know we get a sense of what, what it could look like. And that's what we ought to do and live here, live that way ourselves. Um, and if everybody did that, well, it'd be a better place. I mean, in my perfect world, you know, we're going to, the New York Jets are going to win football games. <laughs> Everybody's going to be listening to Bob Dylan. <laughs> <laughs> Bob Dylan's a good guy. I don't know about the Jets. Hey, I was I grew up be, being an Eagles fan, so. <laughs> <laughs> well, we'll tell you a story about us and Bob Dylan. There's a rumor that's been going around that when Bob Dylan picked up his Nobel Prize, he was wearing John's crazy socks. Now, we started that rumor. But he hasn't denied it, so it's possible. <laughs> um, I knew somebody who actually met him. Uh, they, they, they met him on a bus trip. And uh, the person that they described, there's, there's the person who appears on stage, and then there's the person that, the person person. And knowing, uh, knowing this story of how he rode a Greyhound bus to go from one point in Arizona to another point in Arizona, um, that he's a down-to-earth person, and if he isn't, and if he isn't, and he's a truthful person, that if he isn't denying it, he may have actually had the socks on. <laughs> so, uh, so uh, hey, you know, he may have actually had the socks on. So let, let, let's help spread that rumor. John Dillon wore <laughs> John's socks <laughs> to receive his Nobel Prize. And that was it. There you go. That would be in Geneva, right? I think he's in Geneva. Yeah, he went up to yeah. went Sweden somewhere. What? Yeah. yeah, I forget where in Sweden you pick it up. Yeah, I don't have to worry about that. I have not won a Nobel Prize. <laughs> if they had a Nobel Prize for socks, John, you could win it. <laughs> oh, well, thank you. I, you know, I, I I hope that I hope that they actually uh, moreover I hope that, that they hand hand out Nobel prizes for the spread of happiness. And it, and maybe John would be in, in in line for that. Well, we're very fortunate for the things that have happened or that we get to do. So, right. Yeah. You, you guys, you guys are exuding uh, happiness, joy, and gratitude. Let me tell you, it's is the the past forty minutes have just has just flown past. So. Um, with that, I have to say we, we need to wrap, wrap it up, and thank you so much for being on the show. Um, well, we, we should share that if you want great socks, mm -hmm. you want socks that are going to make you feel good, where can you get them, John? I, I, you are you out at at johnscrazysocks.com. Johnscrazysocks.com. No. And we're on all the social media platforms, and people can find us just by looking for John's crazy socks. You know, check out our Twitter feed, or, or uh, not Twitter, well, we have that, but our TikTok videos. You have right. a lot of fun TikTok videos. Right? Yes. Yeah. Oh. And we can invite people, Michael, every, um, you know, we want to spread happiness. So what do you do every Tuesday afternoon? Every Tuesday, I hold a dance party 
a dance party every Tuesday at 3 p.m. Eastern Time. So he hosts an online dance party at 3 o'clock Eastern Time every Tuesday. Anybody can join. You'll get like 100 people dancing on Zoom. It's great fun. Wow, that sounds like fun. So, yeah. Well, again, thank you so much for, for joining us on the show. And it's been awesome talking to you. And well, thank, thank you, you. everybody, for, for, for listening to us. And we'll see you next time. This show has been produced by Depictions Media. Please contact us at depictions.media for more information.